stand on it, a solid truth. And it's always, we'll learn tonight about how it's with us and it's always there for us to turn to. And then Isaiah 55, 11. I'm going to read a lot of scripture because that's the truth. And when you pray, if you can think of a scripture, God's word never returns void. So he's always going to keep those promises that we read in his word. So Isaiah 55 says, So shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So when you're going through something, you find a scripture, you can stand on it, God's going to hear it and follow through with his promise. Sorry, Robert. in Christ. And there's a, a long time ago, um, I was in a Bible study, and this guy did this demonstration to help us kind of visualize that. So I'm going to do this demonstration real quick. Okay, so one of these represents you, right? And one of these represents God. When we invite Jesus into our hearts and ask us to forgive us and cleanse us, he goes into our lives, right? And he becomes a part of us. And no one can take that away because you can't separate this water. So Christ is in you, he's with you, he will never leave you or forsake you. That's just a demonstration to remember. Okay. So now, the paper I gave you has John 14 on it. Some scriptures in there from John 14. And as we read through this, I want you just to circle the word in every time you see it. Does anyone want to read a paragraph or do you want me to read it? Anyone want to read? Okay. So we're going to start John 14, 9. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He's asking Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you believe that I am in the Father? So there's the word in. So it's saying Jesus is in the Father. And the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. This is just saying Jesus and the Father are with each other and each other. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, so whatever you ask in my name, which is in Jesus' name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. And the Father will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells, dwells is another word that means in, right? Dwells within you and will be in you, right? So Jesus is saying he will be in you. I will not leave you, orphans, I will come to you. Verse 19. A little longer and the world will see me no more, but you 
will see me because I live. Because I live, you will also, or you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So he will show us who he is. And on the back side, oh no, you gotta talk on the front. There is some verses out of Romans. I tried to just go through this for thing I'm gonna read. So like we pray in the name of Jesus. You know, and if you're praying to him, asking him to record it as well, and saying he will listen to it. Right? So Romans 8. <coughs> Therefore, no oh, you want to read properly? I don't care. Go ahead. Listen for the word in and circle. There is there is therefore now no Bring heaven to earth. 
So there are 12 things that I have kind of listed that I'll list, list off in, uh, that we have in Christ in us. And one is the hope of glory. Uh, first, first Colossians 1.27 says, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we are God's hope on the earth. We're the ones, we're his light. We're the ones that are going to spread his word and his bring heaven to earth, right? Number two is we have Christ in us and we're pure and cleansed. So 1 John 1, 19 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So since Christ came and died for us, he's cleansed us. So when I was like probably 19 or 20, we were helping with a kids ministry and the kids pastor, he did another demonstration I'm gonna do. And it was just crazy to me because I grew up on and off going to church in a lot of services and Bible studies, but I never really understood what it meant when Jesus died on the cross. I thought I knew, but when this man did this demonstration, it was like a light bulb for me, and I was like, how did I not realize that? So, Isabella, you want to help me? <laughs> so he was saying, Jesus died on the cross for us. His blood was shed. When we invite him into our hearts, he cleanses us and purifies us, right? So, when we get to heaven, when we have Jesus in our hearts, um, so, are you covered? You don't have to close your face. So when God looks at you in heaven, he sees you as pure and clean and white. He doesn't see the sin because God, Jesus, took that sin for us. So, we mess up, right? And God doesn't see that because Jesus came, he, we invited him into our hearts, and he's in us. And he cleanses us. So when God sees us, he's just like, you can come into heaven. My child, he sees you as clean and pure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the third thing is we're solid in Christ. So Psalms 18, 2. Can I look at that for So there have been moments in my life Sometimes God gives us a feeling. It's not always about a feeling. But there's been times at church and during worship that all of a sudden I'll just feel like so solid inside in my, in my core and in my, you know, the strong part of my being. And when we look at there's scripture that say that we, you know, Christ is the rock that we stand on. We're solid. So, um, Rock, when you want to read Psalms 18.2? The Lord is my walk, my kindness, and my discipline. My God is my walk, and He is my Savior, my refuge. He is my shield, and the whole of my salvation are strong. Good. So in the New King James Version, it says, the one part says, God is my strength, and that God is my rock and my fortress. So in Christ, when He's in us, we can stand sure and solid in who we are, and remember you're bringing heaven to earth. Right? So number four is we are righteous in Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians 1 30 says, But of him you are in Christ, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. It also says that we become wise too. And number the fifth um, thing we are in Christ is we're more than conquerors. Um, Romans 8.37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquer conquerors through him who loves. So when you're going through a hard time and you look up to God, know he's in you and know that he's going to make a way out and you're more than a conqueror through Christ. Number six is we are sons and heirs. Galatians 3.26 so, Galatians 3.26. 
when I looked up heir in the dictionary, it's a person inheriting um, or continuing a legacy, a legal entitlement to property or rank of another person's death. So we're joint heirs with God. So you got that scripture off me? Can you find it? So I'll read it. Galatians 3 26 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And as many as you uh, as many of you as were baptized into Christ put have put on Christ. So you put on Christ, we have what God has. Because we're his sons and his daughters. And then Romans 8, 17 says, And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So it also says in those scriptures that we're glorified in Christ. Okay, number seven is we have authority. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in earth and on, in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and I am always with you to the end of the earth. So, when someone's in trouble, or you're in trouble, you just need to remember these things, that you have authority in Christ. You can pray and overcome fear, whatever you're facing. Number eight, we are complete in Christ. You want to look up Colossians 2.10? Okay, and 11 is we are the light in Christ. 
Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So we are the light on earth and from heaven, right? Just to share the good news of Christ. Number 12 is we are called. So each one of us are called. God has a plan for you. And it says, um, Isaiah 43, 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So you can rest assured, this is the truth of the Lord of God, that he knows you, he's called you by name, and he's redeemed you. So, want to look about Isaiah 55, 11. So I told you guys how God's word, um, it says, it does not return void. Um, so when you trust on the word of God, he's not going to let you down. You might not know what that journey or path is going to look like, but you can know that when you get to the end, you're going to look back and see God's hand over you. Uh, 55, 11. I'll wait for Rock and Roll Dress to read it. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve what the purpose for which I seek to. So that's something you can stand on. So shall my word, which is saying God's word, goes from my mouth, God's mouth, it shall not return to him void. What you pray for, what you need in his will, he's meant to make sure you're protected and it happens. But it shall not, but, it's, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall not, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So, does anyone have any questions? Or any comments to add? Or anything to share? <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to bow our heads tonight and pray. There's a few scriptures I'm just going to um, speak, and I just want you to listen to them, and then we'll pray, and if anyone wants to ask Jesus to come into their heart and be with them, give them these things that he promises us we will have, right? And then we we're the light of the world, so we'll shine through the darkness. And we all know that people are hurting and people need uplifted and encouraged, right? So we should do that through Christ in us. So let's bow our heads, and these are a few verses that just say he will never leave you or forsake you, that he is in you, and you cannot be separated from God's love. So Romans 8 says, for I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. But the promise he gave you. And then there's, there's two other scriptures. Hebrews 13, 5 through 8. And in verse um, 5, towards the end, it says, For he himself said, which is God speaking, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the, the one He is the one that goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. So I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just thank you for 